Hey guys, Jen here, and we are running through the eight limbs of yoga. We're on the Niyamas right now. The Niyamas is the second step in the eight limb path, and it is a set of kind of rules on how you interact with yourself. And what these rules do is they allow you to have a more positive relationship with yourself. So we've already gone through the other four. Um, we've gone through cleanliness and purity. We've gone through contentment. We've gone through kind of the motivation, inner fire type of thing. Um, and the self-reflection or self-study. So the last one that we're on is called Ishvara Pranidhara. And what this is, is um, sometimes it can be described as surrendering to a higher power. Now, we don't try to push religion at all in the yoga room, um, at least especially here at Bent, that we respect all religions. We are not um, here to push our beliefs on you. But there is kind of an underlying theme in yoga, and what that underlying theme is is that maybe we are not, we humans, myself, not the be-all and end-all. Now, whether that means a god, whether that means kind of a universe or an energetic field that's around everyone, whether that means the collective we. So maybe me, myself, am not an island. Maybe I'm connected to the other humans, to the other animals, to the other plants in this world. So this surrender to a higher being is not necessarily saying that you have to believe in a certain religion, but it's saying that there has to be at least the curiosity that maybe it, the buck doesn't stop with us, that maybe there's something more. And here's why this is an important one. Because yoga asks you to surrender, to let go. It asks you this in a posture. It asks you this in your thoughts, in your emotions, in your reactions, and this whole letting go. If there's nothing underneath you, if you are the bottom tier, if you are the foundation, just you, how can you let go of something? There's nothing to, you can't drop anything else off, right? We like to be in control and we don't like to think of other things affecting us. We like to be in control of our experiences. So this letting go of control, if we let go of control and we are the be all end all, who has control then? What has control then? It's not possible to let go of control. So what we need is to explore or be curious that there might be another layer out there. Something that maybe we don't know and that's okay. We don't have to know everything right now. But just to have that curiosity that maybe there is something else out there that when we're surrendering and we're letting go, it's catching us. That's what this niyama is about. It's about the ability to release, to trust in something bigger than yourself, to know that there's something that we're part of, that it's not all about me, that I'm a small piece of a bigger picture. And it doesn't matter what that is. We can all have different beliefs. Somebody can believe in God next to somebody who believes in the universe, next to somebody who believes in a whole bunch of Greek gods or something like that. It's the concept. It's the concept that I am not this island, that nobody can pass through my moat, but that there's rather another layer that's higher than me. There's something else that's out there and that there, are, there is the possibility that it could be interacting with me, that it could be affecting me, whether that is just that we're all connected, whether that is electromagnetic waves, whatever it is, this Niyama asks us to be curious and to practice that whole letting go and that whole surrender. We know a lot of times when we hear the word surrender, we think negative, we think weak, we think surrender. And that's because in the history books, whenever there was a war, the side that surrender lost. So in our subconscious from the early days, we equate surrender with negativity, with weaknesses. And there are a lot of 
agnostic people, people who don't believe in any sort of God, that consider a religion or spiritual belief as a weakness, that we're surrendering to something else. But if you've ever held a yoga posture for a long period of time, what you will start to realize is surrender is sometimes the most courageous choice. It is sometimes the hardest thing to do, and it is the most beneficial thing to do. So if you're holding like a warrior pose and you're lunging, right? And you're lunging and you're clenching your teeth and you're squeezing your toes and you're tight through this posture, you're not going to be able to sustain it. If you're holding on with everything you've got, you are going to get out of that posture pretty quick because you just can't sustain. But if you're in that same posture and you relax the toes, you relax the jaw, maybe you close the eyes and soften that little place between the eyes. If you relax the shoulder blades, and if you start to surrender to the posture, melt around the outline of the posture, you can hold it for so much longer. I mean, think about it scientifically. You're not using the energy to clench the jaw so you can use it in the posture. You're not using the energy to squeeze the toes so you can use it in the posture. When we surrender, we're actually making the posture work better for us than when we're tightening and resisting around the posture. And that lesson goes out into the everyday, our everyday life, that when we are holding and clenching and in control and all this kind of stuff that a lot of times things don't work out the way we want. But when we surrender, when we let things flow through us, all of the sudden there's an ease that comes up. So with this last niyama, then like I said, I'm not trying to push a religious belief on you, but to have that curiosity that maybe there's another layer, something interwoven around us, some higher power that interacts with us. That's all it's asking you to do. Be curious, to explore, to play with it, and to maybe not think that you are the be-all and end-all. 